making his way to the ring. Representing Team France, Camille Ustin. So we're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are, our first event of the evening. Fights, 37 this wins, it's just like seven Bingo! losses, and he's a two time Moroccan Bingo! champion. to live in Thailand, they went to school in Thailand, they started training in Muay Thai from a very early age, had success, started fighting, had success at an early age, and now Victor has, has uh, clocked up 99 fights. Tonight is his 100th fight. He's uh, had 71 wins, 27 losses and just one draw. So vastly experienced, just still just aged just 23. This fight is at 65 kilos. Victor looks confident, fights very regularly. I'd say 100, well, this is his 100th fight. Put on a bit of weight, looks a bit of, look, but it's strong weight now. Seen him over the last few years. Now weighing in at 65 kilos, he's, he's age 23. His opponent, Kamal, looks a little bit taller and slimmer, I would say, from first sight. Side, you'll see Victor's brother Antoine. His father's there. So very much a, a family effort. Become very, very popular. Big favourites on the uh, Thai fight roster in recent years. Still living in Thailand. They've actually opened their own um, their own gym in Bangkok. They did have a family gym. I, I presume the family gym is still running down on the down on the on the Pechbury coast. But they've also opened the studio in Bangkok. So it's a short Y crew Ramway from Victor Pinto. Clear height advantage to, to uh, his opponent Kamal. Whether he'll be able to make that tell, we will see. So Victor looks very cool and calm and confident. His father. A few last minute instructions. A bit of a blessing. This is a tie way. 
up with me here. My commentary point is this Kamal Usti. Picture of concentration. He looks ready, he looks in very good shape. Not an ounce of fat on him. Last word of improvement, the last blessing from his trainer, from his coach. Go there, do it. This is your chance. Go on, do it, son. Now you'll notice that both boxers now are putting uh, have pads on their elbows. This is a requirement of the French sports authorities. Thai fight, as indeed any Muay Thai promotion, must comply with this uh, requirement from the French Thai, uh, from the French authorities. They must wear these elbow pads on the uh, on the obviously on their elbows. So you know, it'll be interesting to see just what effect that has on fights. You know because often. Elbows cause cuts. We have seen a lot of elbows cause cuts in Thai fight in the past. So it's a confident start from from Victor. Letting a few kicks go. That kick from uh, from Kamal was a little bit low. Actually went into the into uh, Victor's. Privates, but uh, they do wear a, a metal box, so it really should be all right. Combination from Kamal. Very often the French fighters do fight with combinations. Again, Victor looking cool, looking calm, looking patient. Kamal taking the fight to him. Early action. Victor getting the better of that, spinning his opponent over. Just Kamal looks like puts a lot more weight on his feet. He's not light on his feet. Nice combination, but again, it's going a little bit low. Needs to be careful about that. Nice left kick for into, into the body from Victor. Kamal answers back, good, good kick into the legs. Decent exchanges in the opening minutes in round one here. Good into the clinch from Kamal. Referee pulls them apart. He's working his combinations again, Kamal there. Perhaps gaining a little bit of confidence. He's got his range now, showing a little bit of danger as well. Victor trying to use his kicks. A lot of red red blemishes on Kamal's side. The kicks are getting through. Good stiff jabs from from uh, Victor. But, but Kamal's got, got a decent jab using his his range as well. There's a little bit of power in those punches from Kamal. So uh, Victor needs to keep his hands up. Well schooled boxer, of course. Victor, so his hands are up. He needs to keep them there, though. That's a good kick. Oh, good follow up. Follow up from Leo there. Sorry, from Victor there. First use of the elbow there from Kamal. Didn't have quite the effect with these pads on, though. Good work from Victor getting out of the, out of the way of that kick and then answering back straight away. He's shaking his head, he's saying, no, that didn't, didn't have an effect, but I wonder if it did. That's giving, that's giving Kamal some confidence there. He really thinks that maybe he can do something now. Victor's happy to kick. But again, Victor's bit, too many Victor's kicks are getting caught by Kamal. They're not getting through. Some are, but too many are getting caught. That one got through. Great right hand from Victor gets through. 
but he answers back in great style because he's taking uh, taking Kamal down there. So he answers back. But Kamal has shown his danger. Twice he's caught uh, Victor. Victor's used some nice technique, but he hasn't had the same effect that Kamal has had. Good kick from Victor gets through on the side. The referee pulled him apart. Constant action here. In our opening bout. Nice right hand from Victor. Kamal switching his stance. And back. Some furious punches coming in from Kamal. Victor's is a bit more measured. The referee just ensuring that elbow pad is up, covering the elbow. Allowing Victor to get his punches, but again, a decent, a very good kick comes over the top from Kamal. He's dangerous with that, and then he catches and takes Victor down. Victor's corner is saying, get your right kick going, get your right kick going, follow it up, follow it up. So that's what he's done, he's three kicks on the trot, and they're getting through. But Kamal answers back with his, he's got his hands in range. Victor's really working that, that right kick, but Kamal's, Kamal's not bothered. Victor knows he's got to put some work, he's putting some elbows in over the top now. But Kamal takes them. Good performance from Kamal here. He took those, he took those elbows. Again, now, oh, good work from Victor. He's opened them up. Now the referee is, is giving him a standing eight count. <laughs> I say, I think this is <clears throat> more a reflection of the uh, European style of refereeing as opposed to the Thai. And now there's a cut opened up. I haven't been able to see it. He's looking the other way. I haven't seen this cut yet. But the, the doctor has been called over to have a look at this cut. You say we saw Victor land at several elbows there. Some of them just went against the arms, but one or two have got through. Doctor doesn't seem to be too concerned. He's holding a pad up. He's like, oh no, what's happening here? Because this is going on for a long time. Oh, that's interesting. I think the ref, you know, the doctor said it's off. Stop with the cut. Well, drama. Drama in our first bout here in Paris. So, Victor Pinto gets a knockout win. But sorry, a TKO, TKO. Stop with the cut. Nice sportsmanship, the boys embracing at the end of the fight there. It was a great performance by Kamal Usti. It's a shame it's had to end that way. He's showing, you know, he's padding his heart and he may well do. Victor produced something a little bit special, which he needed to. He'd taken a few heavy shots, quite a few good kicks had got through from Kamal. But those elbow, that elbow got through and there's quite a lot of blood coming down from it. The, re the doctor, yeah, we can see there's a deep cut over the top of his left eye, and that's what the doctor has said. No, he's not willing to let it go on. And uh, if he believes that's, that's right, then that is right. Uh, the safety of the fighters is uh, paramount on these shows. So, as ever with Thai Fight, it will be announced. Victor's, Victor's win will be confirmed to the crowd now. And the third fight, the finish, Victor Pinto! Victor Pinto, our winner, our first fight here. Winning with a stoppage caused by the elbow. Making his way into the ring, 
representing Team France. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Charles Carlito Francois. T in the black robe in the black corner he'll be wearing the black shorts and this is going to be a very very interesting matchup because Charles Francois is a lot older he is 30 whereas PTT is just 19 years old so there's a big age difference and the other very very interesting fact here is that Charles Francois is vastly experienced. He has had 115 fights. It's usually the kind of statistic we uh, we see with the ties. And of those uh, 115 fights, 97 have ended in victory against just 17 losses. So that's a fantastic record from Charles Francois. Um, those who follow Thai fight may well remember that we have seen Charles Francois fight on the Thai fight before. Um, he lost to Senchai, legendary Senchai, who we will see later. He's on tonight's show. Charles Francois fought Senchai and lost. Actually, lost by a knockout on that on that night. And indeed, in the past, he has fought several ties. Very much walk forward, awkward style. So he keeps walking forward, walking forward. But what I found, uh, what I remember from the Senchai fight was that he found it difficult to cope with Senchai's movements, Sen Sen Senchai's tricks, the fact that Senchai would come at him from all angles. I'm sure, PTT's corner, PTT's management will have told him. That's the kind of thing maybe he needs to be doing. PTT, I say, very interesting figure, only 19 years old. Comes from Chombury, trains at the uh, Petrung Ruang gym in Pattaya. So, just 19 years old, but he's had 127 fights already, 97 victories against 29 losses and one draw. Importantly, uh, PTT has, uh, is a past winner of the Isuzu Cup, which is a very, very demanding tournament for format. Fought at uh, Omnoy Stadium. And winners of that can go get in through, can go through to Thai Fight. He has gone through to Thai Fight and he won his Thai Fight event. He was the Thai Fight, current Thai Fight champion at 68 kilos. And he's fought on several of these shows, but I say he's still just 19 years old. 
My goodness, I, I'm impressed. This, is, this young man going across the world. Remember, these boys, for these boys, uh, our local time is uh, perhaps about 8 o'clock in the evening, but for these boys, that's like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. So their body clocks are going to be all over the place. They've been in town uh, two, two days, I think. But as ever, the ties are ever professional, and they just get on with it. Clear, clear height advantage, my goodness, a clear height advantage to Charles Francois. Tall, slim man, 30 years old now, Charles Francois, PTT just 19. But PTT looks a picture of concentration, doesn't he? Despite 68 kilos. And so we're off straight into the action from PTT. Strong right push kick. He's straight in, letting his hands go, and then into a combination. Charles takes it, keeps his hands in a nice, nice high guard. When it go, when they go into a clinch, though, PTT shows his experience in the clinch, taking Charles over. PTT taking the action to Charles. Setting his shots up there. Trying to get Charles to drop his drop his hand, drop his hand, doing it again there. Letting the combinations go, PTT. And usually Charles taking the taking the fight into the clinch. It's usually the other way around. Showing his experience over 100 fights, as I say, 115 fights. He's not blowing hard. He's relaxed. He's cool. Getting out of the sting of that one. He's working off his combinations, isn't he? Let's two hands go and then follows up. Very much a European style. Fighting out of the southpaw stance, right foot forward. Leading with his hands. Good knees from PTT. Oh, and a good elbow over the top from Charles. So it's a good exchange here. So this is a tough, tough battle for the young man, young Thai. Again, again, Charles looking to whip that right elbow over. He's a dangerous fighter, this Charles. Oh, and a good, good, good right elbow from PTT onto the jaw of Charles, but he's taking it, he smiles, he says, never mind. Fortunately, he had his chin down, but that, but that rocked him. Oh, and then PTT takes him down, showing again his experience, his ability in the clinch. ensuring those pads up on the elbows as required by the Sports Authority of France, these elbow pads. Oh, a beautiful kick onto the inner thigh of Charles, actually lifting him off his feet, that one, literally. Good knee from Charles. Good exchanges in the opening part of this fight here. Notice with PTT, barely takes a step back, does he? And the bell goes to the end of round one. A really, really nice even round. I'd score that. I'd probably score that a draw, my goodness. Save. Straight into the action with the kicks. Kick exchange. Again, Ty looking to set that, set the strong kick up behind his punches. Double, double, double jabs. But Charles having none of it. Charles not allowing himself to be taken over. Good knee from the tie. Referee very fast to pull him apart there. I think they could have stayed together, could have seen what developed there. Good combination from the tie, but again, Charles just stays in there. He stayed in close and whipped an elbow over the top. So, oh, great knees from both boys. Actually, that, Charles looked like he folded a little bit there. That might knock a bit of the, the steam out of him. 
Mars goes for the high kick, but uh, going off balance as he did so. Oh, dynamic jumping elbow. That would have gotten a 50,000 baht uh, tip if, he'd, uh, if that had caused a knockout. But it's given him some encouragement, and I think it's perhaps phased Charles a little bit. PTT looking to work those knees, looking to get, create, the, create the space. But Charles has got the experience. Charles won't allow him to pull back and create that space to get his knees going. Good combination again, good following up with the knee from Portoto and a good elbow over the top. Portoto pushing forward all the time, pushing forward and taking his bone off, off balance. Stubborn performance from Charles. He's taking, he takes some shots. He can answer back. Again, they're being caught off balance by PTT. Oh, a big, heavy elbow, right elbow from PTT goes over the top. Charles is still there, though, he's still in it. Looking a little bit ragged there, though. Good kick from Charles, he keeps answering back, he's a dangerous opponent. Porto Tor looking to put the elbows in over the top, but Charles has got that experience, he's keeping his hands up. PTT's going forward, marching forward, and again, looking to set those big knees up. But Charles not allowing him to do so, again, like Porto Tor looking, oh, looking for the elbow and then pulling him over, off balance. He's, Fortunately, Charles is just keeping those hands up and withstanding these elbows, two elbows <coughs> coming in. Oh, and there, there's a spinning back elbow. Charles answers back with an elbow himself. That's the end of round two. PTT surely edging ahead there in round two. Some fast and furious stuff, but Charles very much in it. A start from both boys, good action. Good knee from PTT. Charles still in it. I like the way he's keeping his hands up and determined. Oh! Takedown from PTT. Always goes well with the Thai judges. Remember, we've got French judges for this con this, con this con competition this evening. And again! And again, using that technique. It's demoralizing that technique and it can knock the wind out of you. Charles, Charles still very much in the fight though. Again, PTT taking the fight to him. Charles evading well. Again, the referee very, very fast to pull the boxes apart. I think they could perhaps stay together and let the bit of the work, the clinch work go. Again, PTT walking forward, walking forward. They've been a little bit frustrated by Charles. I don't think Charles is getting the good technique off himself to be shading this. I think that, uh, in my view, oh, that was a great, a great right knee from PTT, which got through. But Charles is still there. Didn't hurt him. But the judges should be noting these strong knees from the tie. Good work from the tie, blocking the off. Uh, Charles is advancing with the leg across there. Good technique. Again, it's PTT going forward, isn't it? Charles needs to let something go if he's going to shade it. Again, but the explosive looking for the, the jumping elbow. He's got his eye on that 50,000 baht bonus. A lot of money, 50,000 baht to win with one strike. That's the bonus. Uh, Supplied by our sponsor, Chang Beer. Again, PTT's got him on the ropes and looking to follow up all the time. Constant action from PTT. I think he'll sleep well tonight, my goodness. Charles answers back, and that's appreciated by his home crowd. Again, he just can't get the knees going in time there, though. Oh, and then when it comes down to it, PTT pulls him over, as he's done throughout this fight. Takes, 
years and years. That's, that's doing your clinch work in the gym five, six times a week. That was a great jumping and jumping knee. It's not uh, Charles off balance. And again, BTT looking a little bit ragged there, actually. He just wants to make sure he keeps his hands up because we've seen Charles is dangerous. And I think that I think that PTT is tired now. PT, oh, lovely turning there, using his technique there, using his skill as we close and come to the final point of round three, the third and final round. Well, I think that for my mind, to my mind, I think PTT, Potato, Petrung Ruang was pulling ahead throughout that fight. Charles gave him a good fight, pushed him, but to my mind, didn't do enough, didn't catch PTT with clean technique. I think that PTT just like pulled ahead, especially through the second and third round. But we'll go to the judges' scorecards. PTT is looking confident. 19 years old, my goodness. Fighting all over the world on the Thai fight uh, promotions. Skill and dedication brought him this. So, our announcer, over to our announcer in the ring. technique been shown particularly by PTT I say he really opened up in the second and third round this fight the winner is To confirms the decision goes to the tie. PTT Petrung Ruang, Potato Petrung Ruang from Thailand. But uh, there's a hook for Charles, Charles Francois, because he gave a great performance. That was a really good. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring. Representing Team France, put your hands together for Johan Busigio.
very, very interesting match this. Sukorn saw Klimi from uh, from Pattaya, from Chom Pattaya City in uh, Chomburi in Thailand against Johan Bosajo. Sutskorn's 30 years old, he's had 291 fights, 249 victories against 39 losses and three draws. He's a former WPMF champion, he's a former Thai fight card Chuak, uh, the, where they use the bindings on the hands, he was a champion of that in 2013. He's been a regular on Thai fight since 2011, and for the first for the first uh, probably four and a half, five years, he was unbeatable, he was invincible. He, he provided, he produced a succession of superb performances and just like knocked out several opponents with a flamboyant, extravagant style, very, very entertaining style. But in the last 16 months, something's gone wrong. He's had five losses in the last 16 months. Two of his last three fights have ended in losses, and two of them to Frenchmen. One was to Antoine and the other to Jimmy Vino. So coming into this fight, Sutsukorn has got something to prove. He's a superstar in Thailand, there's a lot of interest in him, so if he fails, if he loses, it hurts. So he, he wants to come back. He wants to get his he wants to get his mojo back. He wants to get the win. But he's gonna he's got his work cut out tonight against Johan Bosajor because Johan, age 33, vastly experienced, 125 fights, 88 wins, 35 losses and two losses and, and two draws. He's a former champion of France and he's uh, also won a WPM uh, intercontinental belt and that's one of the one of the more, most uh, respected uh, international uh, events. And he's a spectacular fighter, is uh, Johan. Look out for a lot of spinning kicks and spinning elbows. To my, he's a high energy fighter. He keeps going, keeps moving, a lot of movement. Um, can be a little bit wild, but we'll have to see just which uh, which uh, game he's going to bring to this fight. As I say, Sutsukorn so Klinmi has got something to prove here. He's not the fighter that he was a year and a half ago. Can he get that back? Can he get that mojo uh, back? So he looked a little bit more pensive when I saw him earlier Just, earlier in the evening than, uh, than I would usually oh no. expect him to be. I saw him in, when I saw him a couple of years ago, Don't. he was beaming, bright and confident. Some of that, that's been dinted a little bit. So we're going to the opening exchanges. Melissa's well, gone smiling, looking cool and calm. Good eyes, good technique. Good eyes to keep him out of trouble. Johan take the fight to him. Sutsukorn just perhaps happy to use one of the techniques. One of one of Sutsukorn's favourite techniques is to be very sort of quiet, just very sort, also a little, a little bit slow, and then erupt with a with a technique. And in this opening exchange, Johan looking as if he's going for the knockout, throwing big power, big power into his punches. To mix it up with, a, with an upward elbow there, Don't. Johan. Sutsukorn saw it coming. So it's, a, it's a calm Sutsukorn, smiling. Oh, and a great kick over the top, but sporting Johan had his hands up. Sutsukorn taking Johan over there, catching the kick and taking him over. Tough fight for Sutsukorn. This man vastly experienced, a big, strong man as well. Big, thick legs. Both boys just weighing each other up now. Oh, Sutsukorn gets the jab through. Johan takes him over. Johan's looking a bit contemptuous. He's not going to be phased by, by uh, Sutsukorn's reputation. Sutsukorn smiling. Sutsukorn saw his distance out, just waiting, patient. It can be a counter fight to Sutsukorn, he likes that style. And he let, oh, and he takes the Frenchman over there. So that's, that's showing that's 290 fights, that's, that's what it does to you. You've got that presence of mind, you've got that confidence. Oh, good spinning back elbow, spinning back fist from the Frenchman. Didn't really test Sutsukorn though. Sutskorn knows he's got to concentrate. He'll smile. 
Leg kicks coming through, good strong punches back from Sutzakorn. No, there's a good match here. Let his hands go, the Frenchman there. Oh, a good spinning back elbow, but again, Sutzakorn saw it coming, got out of the way. Grabs the Frenchman by the waist. Oh, lovely, lovely technique to, again, get out of the way and grab the Frenchman by the waist. In Thailand, that scores very highly if you can go around the back of your opponent. Remember, this fight will be judged by French referee and French judges. Might see it a little bit different to ties. Great overhand right at the end of, that, at the, end of, the, of the round there from Johan. But... Uh, Subsequent. And then, see, every now and again, he just erupts and explodes into pack with powerful techniques going forward. So I think Johan just telegraphs his techniques. Oh, and that was a good, strong kick. Well, Subsequent caught. Oh, a little bit of the play acting from both fighters now. Johan looking very serious. Oh, my goodness, it's good that he got out of the way of that. Since so gone acknowledging it. Since so gone with the fight with the man. Like, that was a great left hook from the Frenchman. Bit of play action from both boys. But the Frenchman feels emboldened by his, the fact that these punches are getting through. And he's saying, come on, Al, 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 let me have it, let me have it. He's coming forward, the Frenchman, he's got to be careful, though. What Sutsukon got, Sutsukon mixes it up, punch-kick combination. Great action in round two here. Sutsukon in the black, Johan. Oh! Johan, over our commentary position, I'm glad that the referee pulled him apart there, otherwise Sutsukon would have been on my desk. Great match, great match. <laughs> so much, so many uh, screams from uh, the Frenchman's corner, he's, he's sort of like saying, well, hold on, let me concentrate on the fight, uh, let me do it my way. Good action, Sutskon not allowing himself to be taken down. But the Frenchman's up there, he's up with this fight. Sutskon needs to come back. Oh my goodness! Big left, big left hook. Sutskon withstood it, he smiles. But he can't take too many more of those. The referee just making the same, make sure you keep your, your kicks above the groin area. Sutskon needs to do a little bit more though, doesn't he? Seems to have lost that little bit of an edge, that little bit of a spark. Remember, you know, Muay Thai, like, so, like all sports, it's a percentage game. You drop one or two, one or two points of percent, and you just, it's that split second too late with the timing, that split second behind. But this is a very, very difficult opponent for Sutsukorn. Say, uh, explained earlier, the French team is very much a team. Hand picked. So really matched, really give the ties, really compete with the ties. Speaking of the tie fight producers, they were happy to do that. They're happy with the French team, with the French referee system. It's, uh, you know, they don't want to be accused of setting fights up. They want it to be a good match. End of round two, great action again. Well, the, the Frenchman are... Bunts, he doesn't like it. He's a hero. Oh, my goodness, it's good that he evaded that one from Charles, uh, from Johan. Stiff jab from Sudzikorn. Again, the Frenchman coming forward, and again, Sudzikorn going under that left hook and going round the back. Plenty of pep in this, uh, in Johan. Look at him on his feet. Oh, he's going in with the upper elbow there. Oh, telegraph that, and Sutscorn takes him down. Good exchanges. No real advantage being gained by either fighter. Johan going forward, looking for the big shots. I can see he's looking to get that right hand. That right hand got through again. Sutscorn should not be taking those. He wants to get his hands up and. 
always retaliates, gets a knee in at the end of Sutsukorn, but he shipped a big right hand there, he took a big right hand on the jaw, he doesn't want to be taking shots like that, not against this big, strong man, Johan Beausejour, from France. Sutsukorn needs to pull something a bit special out now, he's going to have to pull this round, I think. Frenchman takes the kick. Oh, that one got through, though. Good work from Sutsukorn there, though, catching the kick and then pulling him up, taking him off balance. Again, oh, my goodness, now that, the kick there got through. The retaliation kick from the right kick from Sutsukorn got through, but the Frenchman took it, he's straight back onto his feet and he's looking to land one of those big right hands again. Sutsukorn did well to get out of the way of that one and say, Johan variety of techniques, but sometimes she just telegraphs it a little bit too much. So it's going to see it coming, as, it, as was the case there. So he's just a little bit too deliberate, is Johan. Well, I think that's an acknowledgement of Senchai, but he, he's raging coming forward. He's got to be careful though, because Sudskorn, certainly in his earlier days, Sudskorn used a box coming forward to get his technique off. He wants to be, he's opening himself up to a spinning back elbow, which Sudskorn won a lot of fights with a few years ago. But now he's say, just content just to stay out of trouble and take Johan down. And it's very, very interesting to see the way the judges are scoring this, because Johan is the man who's coming forward, who's taking the fight to him. Oh, and a spinning back elbow from, <clears throat> from Sudskorn. But again, Charles up there, it didn't hurt him. He's very, very up for this fight, is Johan. So it's gone on the back leg, and the bell goes to the end of round three, the third and final round. Well, so we go to the judges' scorecards, and it'll be very, very interesting to see which way they score this. Both boys playing to the crowd here, trying to get the crowd on their side. Will that sway the judges? Hey, it's great action, very much appreciated. It's a bumper crowd, superb indoor arena here at the uh, Stade Pierre de Pobatin in Paris. That was a great show, that was a great fight. Great fight worthy of this noble sporting arena. Both boys, Hogan, mark of appreciation and respect, brought the best out of each other. So, we have the judges' scorecards. The winner is... Sutsukorn gets the decision. Johan Bosijor looks disappointed, as well he might. He was certainly in that fight. Difficult to call. Remember, the judges and the referee are French. And sporting from Johan there, acknowledging... And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, representing Team France, Hamza Ndoto! figure of Hamza Goto. Let's put your hands together for Bangalore City Fighters!
Teng Ming, Sik Te Sai Rung. This is going to be a very, very interesting bow. You see when the boys come together in the middle of the ring, the height advantage that the Frenchman has. And there's a lot of noise in the, in the crowd here, a lot of interest, a lot of support for the French fighter, Hamza Ngoto. This fight at 75 kilos. Hamza Ngoto is 26 years old. He's had 41 fights, 39 wins against just two losses. He's, a champ he's the French champion of the WMC, and he's a former European IFMA champion. But the telling point uh, is, is uh, for me, is Hamza's height. He's 195 centimeters tall. You can see just how tall and skinny. So that is going to be something really for Teng Ning to, con to contend with. Teng Ning Sik Je Sai Rung in the black shorts here from Thailand, from Nakhon Sawan in the central northern, well, northern central region of Thailand. He's 24 years old, had 87 fights, 70 of those have ended in victory against just 13 losses. Come through the Isuzu Super Cup. Um, tournament and uh, he won the Isuzu Cup Super Fight in 2015, won the King's Cup three years ago as well. Now interestingly I was talking to the Thai team manager and he was he was telling me that Teng Ning really had to work to make the weight at the weigh-in earlier. He had to go and do some running to get that extra bit of weight off. And that, as I reminded you, uh, or I should remind you, that these ties have only been in the country less than three days. Uh, uh, sorry, they've been here for two days. So bearing in mind jet lag, things like that. For these boys, it's about two o'clock in the morning. So it's something to behold. And now you can see that height difference, the height advantage to the French boxer, Hamza Ngoto, 195 centimetres tall, whereas his opponent's 178. So that's 17 centimetres difference, tall, slim, young man, Hamza Ngoto. Hamza Ngoto from France, representing France, and Teng Ning representing Thailand. So plenty of support, the, the French crowd really getting behind the local boy, Hamza Ngoto. So, seconds out, and we, oh, referee just requiring just a wipe, perhaps a little bit of Vaseline off the chest of uh, Teng Ning. An impressive display of Sat Yant on his Juge. back. Juge. Juge. So, round one. Teng Ning from Thailand. Hamza Ngoto from France. It's a... Chuck. So, what's his strategy going to be? How's Teng Ning going to cope with this tall, rangy fighter? Ooh. Goodness, straight away, showing that height advantage used now, teep against the chin of Teng Ning. Teng Ning's really got to think about this, he's really got to work a strategy out. The other thing about this kind of boxing is... He seems to be, I'd imagine he'd be all bone, I would not like to kick him. Keeping his right hand up high, and nice and high as well, Hamza. He's on the back foot. Teng Ning edging forward, edging forward. Teng Ning in that southpaw stance, right foot forward, going to the clinch. The referee again, referee very, very quick to pull him apart. Not sure quite why. There's nothing wrong going to the clinch as long as there's action. With the concentration on Teng Ning as he's edging closer, getting in, getting in close. Frenchman trying to get the elbow going. Determined 
and go for a strap. Oh, and then just looking to power forward, power through. And that's what I think we're going to see from Tengnen. That's going to be his strategy, trying to break down the distance, not allow Hamza to use his reach, and just like bustle through the middle and try and steamroller him through. That's going to be Tengnen's technique, uh, tactic, I think, this evening. Oh, great knee from the Frenchman. I felt that really would have taken the win out of a lot of boxers. But Tengning is still there, still going forward, and sweeps the Frenchman away. Contemptuously. It's Tengning, he keeps going forward now, going for the, going for the legs. Determined performance from Tengning. Hamza's, Hamza's uh, corner screen has me advance, advance, go forward, go forward, go forward. Because it does look like he's been bossed a little bit through this fight. Tengning is the one who's going forward. He's saying go forward, go forward. Oh, great left, great left hook. And uh, as he spins to take Hamza down, the tie. And he's energized by that. He's really letting go of the hands. The tie really let go of the hands. Again, Hamza is constantly looking over at his corner. He needs a lot of direction from his corner. That's it. Good work from the, from the Frenchman there. Staying out of trouble. But he wants to keep that right hand high. As the bell goes to the end of round one. Some great action in that first round. This young man, Hamza Ngoto in the white from France. Proving very, very difficult for Teng Ning from Thailand to break down in the first round. Hamza's corner have been telling him that he must go forward, he must go forward. Don't let the Thai march him back. As I say, the Thai's technique is to land a technique, his tactic rather is to land a technique and to follow up and land another technique. So if you go back, oh, great exchange just above our commentary position here. It's very tight. Both boys pitch up total concentration. Great combination from the Frenchman. And then a great long knee. Teng Ning takes it all low. Teng Ning still trying to work out. All right, then get that big left hand coming forward. And tie it, tie the Frenchman up. Okay, okay. Just the sheer awkwardness. It's like his kicks, can, he can whip those kicks in with those long legs. We can still whip them round. Oh, the French, the tight oh, pile driver, left hands, following up with that left knee again. As I say, and then thinking he can see, he's trying to work it out. It's like a game of chess. How can he get? In? How can he? Get Hamza to drop his hands and make a breakthrough. That was so difficult, so awkward with that height advantage. And one thing again, I note that the referees are not allowing them to clinch. Usually the tie will have the advantage in the clinches, not every time, but very often it's the case. Oh, great shots coming forward from the tie there. Coming from the Frenchman, but they're not getting through. Fury's instructions coming from the Frenchman's corner. Again, the tie combinations. Oh, and then Frenchman gaining the advantage coming around the back of Teng Ning there. Teng Ning really has got his work cut out. Still hasn't really worked out the best way. Oh, and again, that teep to the face. Contemptuous from the Frenchman. Again, gaining an advantage in that exchange there. This is a hard fight for Teng Ning. So you remember, Teng Ning had to work hard to get the weight off this morning. 
put the jog, put the sweatsuit on and, and do, do a bit more jogging. And it wasn't what he really wanted to do. He just wanted to go back and curl up and have a, and go back to sleep. End of round two. Great, great exchanges in that round. Determination of the tie there is works that elbow, but again doesn't do any damage on them. Go to so determined the tie always going straight over the over the top rope. A little bit too obvious. Need to mix it up. And again that teep, contemptuous teep to the face. That's the third time he's landed that one in each round. And go to good elbow over the top. Elbow exchange, the tie answers back with an elbow. Spinning back elbow from the Frenchman. Doesn't get through though. Going to the clinch. Again, the referee pulling them apart, not allowing them to clinch. Good work, good work. And the long knees from the Frenchman. Ty really has got a lot to think about now. And it's so difficult, but oh great elbow for him, the Frenchman. And the tie comes back. Well, what an exchange there. That was a lovely elbow from the from the Frenchman, but Tengling just fired straight back. It really is like tit-for-tat stuff. What a show. And the referee pulled him apart on that exchange. Tengling has had better nights of, better nights of work. Nice long knee from the Frenchman, and again. And again, as, as Tengen just forges forward, trying to land a knockout shot. Tengen come with the big punches over the top. Tengen's <laughs> listening so intently to his, his, his corner. I'm scared they're just going to distract him at a vital moment. Last few seconds of the round. Still all to go for, he's trying that long tee, but again, all oh, lovely hand and then knee exchange. <clears throat> knee, knee, hand, knee combination from the tie. Solid knee into the midriff of Hamza. But he took, he took it, he's in superb condition, this young man. Oh, and again, good work from Hamza. He's evened him out in those, in those close quarter exchanges. He's been a very difficult opponent, say the sheer height advantage. Tengning really hasn't been happy coping with him all night. And it's, and it's Hamza who's edging forward, going forward, taking him into the corner, and that's the bell goes to the end of the third and final round. Both boys raise their arms, both boys feeling confident, but we shall see, that'll go to the judges' scorecards. raises our arms it's a victory parade but I'm not sure I'm not sure if he can be totally confident now listen to the roar from the French crowd for the local boy there's no tension in the air and furious stuff. Say the tie just couldn't work as an advantage. Struggling to cope with the, the, the sheer height range difference, the awkward style of Hamza. Did Hamza put enough on Tengning though? Did he do enough to get the victory? How did the judges see it? Let's see. Here we go.
Ngoto. And really, I don't think Tengning or his corner or indeed anybody in Thailand will have a problem with that. That was a great fight. Tengning found it very, very difficult to break down Hamza Ngoto. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring, representing Team France, Aiden Tunke! He's a, w, he's a past WMC champion and a past w, PMF champion. But in recent, in the last couple of years, he seems to, well, in the last year or so, um, he really seems to have come into his own. Just one loss in the last two years, and that's fighting pretty much every month, including um, a, a notable win against uh, Sutsukon Saul Klinmi. But he has his work cut out tonight because Aiden Tunke, aged 34 from Turkey, is a WPMF European champion. He's an, an ISKA world champion. He's got very, very good hands. He's a dangerous fighter. He uses the spinning back elbow. I've seen it several times. Watch out for this young man. Remember that 50,000 baht bonus provided by our sponsor Chang Beer for a victory via spinning back elbow. So uh, I'm sure Aiden Tunke will be aware of that. 50,000 baht. Uh, not sure quite what that would be in euros. Maybe a couple of thousand euros. So that would uh, that go down very nicely, whoever you are, wherever you are. So this will be an interesting match. Say Antoine Pinto has come into his own, is really improved, I'd say, and uh, is very confident. Um, fought on the, the Glory promotion a couple of months back in the USA. Uh, sorry, I, I'm not sure it was in the USA, but he switched across to Glory using uh, the kickboxing rules and had a good win on that. 
and his brother have opened their own sort of studio in, in Bangkok. But the family do run a gym down in the south of Thailand, in Pechburi province. Antoine very much schooled in the Thai way of doing things, so going to his Y crew, always did a nice Y crew movement to pay respects to his teachers, to pay his respects to the Thai boxers who have gone before him. Also helps to concentrate the mind. Cool character, Antoine, I was speaking to him earlier, very, very relaxed, confident, confidence that comes with 168 fights. Remember, he is, was, is born in France, he is French, so it means something to come back here. All right, he's fighting for the Thai fight team, for, for fighting for Thailand, but he is French. A little bit of edge there from uh, Aiden Tunke. Oh, a bit more edge. We don't usually see that. So, but I'm sure that uh, Antoine will not be phased by that. He's been up against some very, very big, strong That's opponents it. over the years as, as Antoine, so uh, he'll, he won't be too phased by that. No. As I say, Aiden Tunke, good with his hands, good with that spinning back elbow. Remember, dangerous opponent for Antoine. Antoine's father there taking, removing the uh, French flag from his son's waist. His brother who won earlier with that uh, TKO up from an elbow at ringside. Again, as in previous fights, the referee ensuring these elbow pads are up tight against the elbows as required by the sporting author sports authorities of France. So, round one. Through the high guard of Antoine. Trying to work his opponents out. Good long jab from him, whips a high kick over. Opponent a little bit more deliberate. A little bit too deliberate with those kicks as soon as speed them up. Antoine seeing them, blocking them. Strong, powerful man, this Tunke from Turkey. Going to the clinch. Again, the referee pulling them apart. Thai referees would have let them continue. There was action there. Antoine looks very relaxed, doesn't he? Oh, and a good solid knee. As he mixes it up. Okay, he tries to pull him over. Mixing it up nicely, kick followed by the punches. He does punch with some strength, Antoine. He's a strong guy now. So this fight at 77 kilos. That gets over the top. And when Aiden, Aiden Tunke throws his kicks, tends to lose balance. And Antoine has noticed that, has been able to pull him over a couple of times in these early exchanges. Stiff jabs from, from uh, Antoine. And getting out of the way, getting out of the way, and then coming back with a punch combination. Good work from Antoine. And there's that spinning back elbow I said earlier. Good kick, good kick into the midriff of Tunke. Mixing his punches up nicely, Antoine. Then putting an elbow in, and then another elbow at the top. Tunke goes to the spinning back elbow again. What a shame it is with it having to use these elbow pads that are breaking up the rhythm of the fight there. Good high guard from Antoine. Not allowing uh, Tunke to work his hands. Nice high kick. He needs to keep working those high kicks into the arms to take the sting out of Tunke's punches. Again, Tunke's kicks are caught by Antoine and he's able to capitalise on it. Okay, needs to pep that kick up a little bit. Antoine keeps 
Martin back with a push kick. And Tunk Hay looking to come over with a big strong right or a big strong elbow. Oh, and the bell went for the end of the round there, but uh, we didn't hear it too clearly. Got several championships under his in the past. You can see it. the intent. He's thinking, right, I'll just go for my hands. I'm not going to use it for my legs. Go for my hands. That's my strong point. In the, in the knee exchange there, the referee pulls him apart. Oh no, did Antoine fall a little bit awkwardly there? Ah, ooh, now they both, both boys hit the ground there with some force. Antoine seems to be holding on a little bit there. I'm just wondering if Antoine sort of like hurt his, damaged his leg a little bit, perhaps twisted his leg, that right leg. And that earlier exchange. Oh, that's a good shot from Tunke. Antoine took it, but there was a good whipping right over the top. Antoine, good exchange. Caught, caught Tunke on the chin and then caught him with a decent knee. These are good exchanges. Oh, Tunke goes off balance again. I say he's just a little bit wild with those kicks. He just loses balance easily. And again. It does have an effect when you when you do fall over, when you when you when you take to the ground, it can wind you, it can be a little bit disorientating. Good knee for him. Antoine not allowing himself to be pulled over by Tunke. Tunke is a, just a little bit too deliberate. Tries to get the work the knee over the top. He hasn't got the balance sorted out to pull Antoine over like he'd like to. Antoine falls on top of him, which will probably like wind him. Antoine stays on top of him. Seems to be stuck to him there. Tunke's corner telling him to work, work those legs. Oh, but Antoine answers back very, very nicely, whipping Tunke's legs away from him. Punch combination from Antoine, mixing it up high and low. You see a strong opponent, this Aiden Tunke from Turkey. He's uh, working that knee, uh, work, sorry, working the, uh, the kick into the thigh, left thigh of Antoine. I think it's corner and telling him to do that. They think that uh, perhaps Antoine has twisted his, le his leg over. Nice combination from Antoine with, uh, with his punches. Frenchman very much going for that leg kick. Antoine pushes him back with the tee. Bell goes to the end of round two. Both boys think they've done enough to win that round. We shall see. Kenton K going looking for the low kicks. High kicks. Oh, great shot over the top from, from Antoine. Again, again, Tunke's kick too obvious. Antoine sees it and throws him over. Antoine keeping him back there, showing his experience, showing his timing. It takes skill to be able to do that, using the team just to hold him back, push him back. Not allowed to come forward and then use those fast, sharp kicks, and there again. And those will, those should be scoring points for Antoine. Those those kicks, just working those kicks. Certainly in Thailand, those kicks will be scoring good points for him. Again, oh, and then making Tunke miss. So that's looking good. That's looking good for Antoine. But we know that Tunke is dangerous, and as the as the clock ticks down in this final round, Tunke may well watch out for that spinning back air elbow. And taking off balance. 
Not sure quite what the referee's objecting to there. Good work from Antoine with the knee. Tunke looks angry, looks furious there. Maybe he's a little bit frustrated because he hasn't been able to land that big shot. Antoine picking him off nicely with the kicks there. These fast, sharp kicks from Antoine. This is the way to do Thai boxing. You know, it's not all a big, big shot. Sometimes those kicks are just enough to sting your opponent, push them back, and also score the point. Yes, there again, there again. That's, that's been the difference in this fight. Those will be scoring points for Antoine. Chunke getting a talking to from the referee, but I think there's a little bit of desperation. He's just looking for that big, big shot. He's looking all the time to wind that big right hand up. You can see there, and in doing so, he's allowing Antoine, he's walking on, allowing Antoine to pick him off with, with those kicks. Corner saying, go back and work his legs, work his legs. I think it's a little bit too late. He pulls him apart as the clock ticks down. We thought that Antoine really has done enough to pull this one out now. Good knee from Antoine there as he's showing he can boss the, the clinch. Kayle <clears throat> looking a little bit frustrated. He hasn't been able to work with his hands the way he has in some of his fights. And Antoine using that defensive kick, that fast left kick into the body, into the arms. Oh, and then the contemptuous teeth. Well, Tunke raised his hands and looks very bit like he, he thinks he's done enough to win it, but uh, not in my book, I don't think. Uh, no, I don't think so. Antoine similarly raising his hands and getting cheers from the crowd. He's got the French flag draped round his shoulders. There's the cheers from the French crowd. I say, we're certainly getting a lot of cheers in Thailand. Very, very popular in Thailand. Oh, my goodness, now. He just sort of seems to have twisted over there. <clears throat> I suspected that he'd done something in the first round. He looked like he'd sort of like fallen awkwardly. And he's just done this. And he just then, he just sort of like fell to the ground. His leg just gave way. Something's gone there with, uh, with Antoine. The doctor's coming into the, into the ring. There's not much they can do there. Just going to put, put a bit of freezing spray on it just to ice it down, cool it down. I imagine that will be uh, a case of uh, ice compression elevation for the rest of the evening for Antoine. But I certainly, uh, in my book, he will have done enough to win, win this fight. So at least they should be happy as he ices his leg. I'm not sure if it's his leg or his knee. He seems to, a couple of times where he seems just like step back a little bit awkwardly certainly in the first round and there you see the brotherly love his brother's holding him up Tim K lifts his hands up he thinks he's done enough to win oh, ladies and gentlemen after three rounds we go to the scorecards Logano in Antoine yes and Antoine Pinto gets the verdict. I think it was those fast, sharp, retaliating kicks which he was able to launch continually throughout the fight against Tunke and never really allowed Tunke to work. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring at this time, representing Team France. Mohamed
one's uh, opponent here is Payak Samui. Payak Samui, Luk Chao Porong Tom from Sapa Summit from Thailand, from Krabi, the beautiful island of Krabi in the south of Thailand. Payak Samui. He's had 87 fights, 68 have ended in victory against 17 losses and two draws. Another regular on the Thai fight uh, roster, 23 years old. This fight made at 69 kilos. Mohamed Swan has had 36 fights, so a lot fewer fights, but 28 of those end in victory against eight losses. He has had experience fighting against Thais before. Um, the Eagle Eyed might recall seeing him. He fought against Sok Rao Pet Yindi. And uh, that fight ended with some sort of confusion. He seemed to damage his jaw. And uh, it wasn't immediately apparent to the referee or the audience what was going on and he just seemed sort of you know but he, he felt he couldn't continue so the fight was stopped this is Mohamed Swan here now on home ground just 22 years old this man representing France great condition just with my commentary position here not an ounce of fat on it as I would expect all these boys have really trained up for this night Samui doing a short white crew. Ramway showing his respects. Appreciated by this knowledgeable crowd here at the Stade Pierre de Corbatin here in Paris. This beautiful spring day. Representing Thailand, the Black Shores, Mohamed Son in the white for France. One step. See from these early exchanges, punches. It's going to be more of a punch from the Frenchman. Some maybe flip type kicks to follow up. Whereas the Thai is going to bowl forward with strong, strong techniques. Samui just trying to weigh his opponents up, and he threw a strong right hand as his opponent came forward there. Nice jab from Mohammed. He's perhaps to up his work rate. Right? Samui looking to work his range out. Mixing it up, punching high, looking low. He's working those low kicks, uh, is Payak Samui. Oh! Oh! A bit of, showing a bit of contempt there is Mohamed Son. Good knee from Mohamed there. Mixing it up nicely, Mohamed. A picture of concentration on Payak Samui's face. Mixing it up. High punches, low kick. Very, very, very tight in there. He looked to come with a very strong elbow over the top. Doesn't land though. Frenchman keeping him off. He's got that height advantage, he's got that range. Oh, good right hand from the tie. Frenchman took it though. It's looking quite dangerous, the Frenchman. Certainly resilient. Say, so, this is a team put together to really compete with the ties, really, really test them, and they're getting tested again here. Payak Samoy. Oh, a good exchange here, explosive stuff. This is going to be one of those don't blink fights. Actually, the ties looking a little bit phased there, and, and Mohammed is looking encouraged. But as he's encouraged, he could open himself up. Oh my goodness, that was a great kick over the top. It got through. That was a great left kick. Great 
And I think he's still a little bit, still a little bit, a little bit drowsy from that. He's just fighting on instinct. His fight Samui. His eyes don't look right. He took a big, big shot, and I don't think he's right. So brave these ties, though. He's, he's fighting his way through it, and that bell has come at the right time. My goodness, because he took a great big right kick to the side of the head which really got through he's there he's not in control of his limbs there <laughs> round two Mohamed representing France, Payak Samui representing Thailand. Yeah, the edge has been given to Mohamed after landing that brilliant kick, which really, really uh, shook Payak Samui. He did well to survive it. A lot of people would have just like packed in at that point. But there's always heart and bravery in these uh, Thai fighters. There's, there's a prestige. Oh! Does look like he's back together again, though, does do, uh, Payak Samui. Oh, that was a good hard kick to the leg of Mohammed. Mixing it up well is Mohammed there. Two good knees in. Good, good straight right to the body. Good right clubbing right hands from the tie. Good, another good knee from him. Trying to pull the tie over, didn't really work, but he's taken off balance. Again, good work from the Frenchman there. He's gaining confidence as the fight's going on. And the tie is looking like he needs another dimension. He needs something else. He needs to open, find a way through, because it's not working so far. Once again, once again, caught out by the Frenchman. Needs a bit of inspiration, does the tie. This is the thing with these three round fights. Two decent kicks from the tie, but he needs to say, he needs a bit of inspiration. He needs. To... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, it seemed that the French, the Frenchman stopped fighting as if like he's. I don't know if his cup has come loose there. And uh, the tie continued. Two touch gloves to gesture. He realizes it's a little bit out of order. Anyway, back to the action. Oh, my goodness. Now, what happened there? Payak Samui just seemed to drop his hands and let two or three really hard shots land on his chin. And his head has been rocked, and again, he should not be taking those shots, and that was great action. That was a good knee from the tie, but then, then Mohammed just whipped him over. And Mohammed has got the advantage here, and it's him taking the fight to him. Remember, these, th these are three-round fights, three three-minute rounds, and it, it makes it for a different fight to the five-round round version. Referee getting involved, and uh, I don't really know why. Well, Payak Samui's smiling, you know, but he's smiling through. So, uh, Mohammed, an impressive display. Certainly pulled ahead in that second round, to my mind. And it showed a little bit of everything. I liked his, his work in the clinch, pulled the. Uh, uh, Passed him way over a couple of times. Certainly rocked him with those solid punches. So, third and final round. Pass him needs to pull him out of the back to my mind. Very determined coming forward. Again, is it too obvious though? He's looking to nail him on the chin. All action, flying forward is the tie. Ty knows he's got to go for a knockout, really. 
will certainly win this fight, win this round very, very convincingly. Mohamed trying to just keep him back on the end of the jab. Ty's getting through, a few shots getting through, though. Just, just through sheer way. Oh, that great uh, high, high kick from the Mohamed there, just to show that uh, Pax Mui has got to concentrate right the way through, and Pax Mui bundles him over. So he's gaining the ascendancy in this round, but he's still, to my mind, he still needs to really get something, pull something out, something a bit special. Oh, was that it? Oh! Pax Mui really intent, he just wants to keep going forward, bowling forward. Oh, great shots, great shots again from, from the Frenchman. He's just so dangerous, he can whip that kick over, and the, the tie comes back. Oh, now that gets through. Big right hand got through, but the Frenchman's still there. He's not phased, didn't shake him. Good timing from the Frenchman again. Good work, good exchange. But the tie is not getting the ascendancy at all. And again, clever from the Frenchman. Oh, and again. This is what happens when, when someone is too obvious. Payak Samui is just forging himself forward. He's just too obvious. So he's allowing, he's walking onto stuff. His opponent can see it coming and then just takes him off balance. And again, and again. He's getting frustrated now, the tie. And he's just walking into it again. He's walking into it. He really needs a knockout, he needs something very special. Has he got it? Has he got it? At the right moment, Mohammed keeps his hands up and stops the kick. He needs something very, very special. I don't know if he's got it. I don't know if he's got it. He needs a, something like a spinning back fist, a spinning back elbow. Oh, and the, the Frenchman works, works the angles. He's got a lot to him. This isn't the Frenchman I saw lose against uh, Sogra. He's got a bloody nose now. Good knee from the Frenchman. The tie is looking a little bit ragged and a little bit like he hasn't really got too many ideas. And the bell goes to the end of round three. Both boys receiving the cheers. It was a good fight. Certainly, I think uh, the, the crowd expect a, a victory to Mohamed Son. crowd, the Thai audience, they won't object to that. It's a fair win, great performance by Mohamed Son, great performance. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, representing Team France, put your hands together for your hand drive!
Miss Sobana from Thai Fighting. Let's put your hands together for AQ Sang Gorong Tanaki. Regular on the Thai Fight roster, has been for several years, has produced some fantastic explosive performances. He really is a bag of a box of tricks. One never really knows just what he's going to do. Very unpredictable, uh, an eye for them, flamboyant, very much an entertainer. Another oh, special fighter. Tends to mix things up really very, very cleverly, you know. He, he looks to go slow, 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 and then bang, go very, very fast. So the Frenchman has his work cut out. Johan Dry from Marseille, 25 years old. And there a picture of concentration going through the ritual, sealing the ring off, reciting a mantra to himself. Been with Thai fight since 2012. Also beaten a lot of big, big names in the Western world, such as Kulebin, Andre Kulebin. So expect fireworks here. He was in the dressing room earlier, okay, and he's okay. a sparky, confident character, Iziku Sang. Bit of a joker, good laugh. Very much an entertainer. And that's made him such a favourite on, uh, on Thai fight over the years. Very popular in Thailand. It's okay? Yes, okay. Come on. Merci. Getting a blessing from his head of camp, Jatui. Trains at the St. Morocot gym in Bangkok. He's a native of Surin. So, Ikyu Sang from Thailand. Johan Dry from France. Three three minute rounds. If Johan can do something, he can make a name for himself. He's got his work cut out against this man. He's on a good run still. Ziku Sang. So, round one. A little bit of the, the, the playfulness of Ikyu Sang. The way to do it is to show that you're not phased by that, you're not worried by it. He's a strong man, is uh, Iki Sangi Bruce. Strong legs, strong body, very explosive. He knocked out a lot of opponents, he's knocked them out with a lot of different techniques as well. He really mixes things up. Expect maybe see a little bit of the old Moy Boran technique. Concentration, Johan taking the fight to him nicely though in his uh, opening exchanges. 
say he's not going to be phased, and I like the way he keeps his hands up high. He needs to do that right throughout, as uh, Hikusan can be dangerous. So really mixing it up. It's Johan who's going forward. He's edging forward all the time. Midriff from uh, Ikyu Sang, uh, making Johan miss. Good work again from Ikyu Sang, getting that right yeah. kick into the, into the midriff of Johan. Oh. Very light on his feet, you'll notice. Always ready to react. Always neutralising each other in that clinch exchange. And Johan's edging forward, needs to let go, let something go though. Chiziki Sang's kick, good, good work from the Frenchman. Start from him. Just needs to let those hands go, maybe. Oh, good jumping knee from Mickey Sang. That would have got him a 50,000 baht bonus if it uh, had been a bit more devastating. Frenchman's not phased though, taking the fight to Mickey Sang. Ooh. Just on the bell there, Ricky Sang was about to throw a, a, an upward elbow. And again, I think he's... <laughs> Seconds out for round two. Three three-minute rounds. Usual tie, tie fight format. If you've just tuned in, these boys both wearing elbow pads as required by the Sports Authority of France. So, Iki Sang from Thailand, Johan Drai from France. Round two. Concentration, Nikki Sang evades and straight back. Johan, oh, Johan's looking dangerous. So, Johan not worried about this man's reputation. He's going forward. Decent right hand coming over the top, and that's encouraging him all the more. He follows up with an elbow. reply from the Frenchman and he's not allowing Ikyu Sang to uh, use his technique to get the leverage to use his power that explosive power that so many other people have succumbed to over the years he's breaking it down he's, he's breaking down the distance is Johan Dry and blocking well there again see breaking down the distance you can see Iki Sang's really thinking, oh, right, what's, I've got plan B. I need a different technique, I need something else, I've got to move him around. Pushing him back with the cheek there. It was good use uh, as uh, the Frenchman came in, good, good kick to the midriff from Iki Sang. But he's not getting an advantage. The Frenchman's calling him on.
Oh, really letting the exchange go, and there are a couple of elbows, and I think they came forward. And that's, uh, but Ikyusang doesn't mind mixing it up. He'll say, right, come on, come on. Um, he's got to give something back as, as Ikyusang, and he doesn't want, you can see him storming forward. The elbow's coming from the Frenchman again. And now Ikyusang really wants to do something. Can he do it, though? Has he got it in his arsenal? Because this Frenchman keeps his hands up very nicely and he's proving very resilient, very tough. He moves around nicely and Ikusan can, just can't work on him at the moment. Good stiff jab from the Frenchman, knocked Ikusan's head back, that one did. Bell goes in round two, and I've got to say, I think the Frenchman is just edged ahead there. He didn't allow Icky. Oh, out of trouble, he's had, he's had a good, nice high guard, long jab. He's used his reach advantage. He's snapped uh, Icky Sang's head back with that jab, and he's got the advantage in my book. I think Ikyusang needs something a little bit special in this third round. Say so his, uh, his boss is saying, get your elbows going. And he's done it before. He's had some spectacular victories over the years as Ikyusang. Has he got it in him? So, third and final round. Ikyusang, Johan. Determination, Ikusan, but Johan's got the measure of him. He's moving round. Oh, sheer, sheer grit and determination from Ikusan. He's going to fight and fight and fight. Oh, say sometimes you need a little bit more guile. You need a bit of something else. You don't. It's not just brute strength because this guy, this guy Johan, can see it coming. Oh, jumping knee from himself and the Frenchman. Nice exchange from Mickey Sang. Just got to calm down, not get carried away. Decent hands from Mickey Sang again. But he's, got to, he's got to follow it up. And again, and again. The Frenchman's taking it though, catching him on the top of the head rather than his, on his chin. See, Mickey Sang can't get him to drop his hands. He's been very, very disciplined as the Frenchman, keeping his hands up. Mickey Sang hasn't been able to get the Frenchman to drop his hands and open up that gap, allow him to you know, clip his chin. Good performance from the Frenchmen again. Well, we've said it all through. Good, this yeah. French team have re really organised themselves. This French, this French team have really organised themselves to the team to, to, to come and win here. They have no thought about just like allowing the ties to show boats or letting them put on a show. They've come to compete and they've come to win. Oh, now, goodness me. The Frenchman very, very determined. He's showing there whatever Ikusang throws at him, he'll take it and he'll answer back. And he's saying, Come on, come on, can you come and get me? You've got to get me. He knows he's done enough to win already. And Ikusang is looking a little bit ragged, a little bit like he hasn't really got too much of an idea. How can he break the defense down? Say, this is the this is the thing with the three-round format, the three-round fight. You haven't got the time to work things out. Maybe over five rounds you can do it. And now I can see Ikyusang is limping quite badly. Whether that, whether that is, oh, look at the spinning back elbow as, from Johan as, as uh, the confidence grows. Ikyusang lets go. He doesn't like to be in this position. He knows he needs something desperate. Oh, look at the jumping kick from Johan. He's very, very confident now. He's moving around, he's working the angles. One last, one last throw from Ikyusang. But Johan just comes back. Ikyusang so determined, but he's too obvious, he's too obvious, surely. Clubbing punches from Ikyusang, and he just takes, oh my goodness, and he's out. Oh my goodness, he walked onto that. Oh dear, 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 he shouldn't get up, he shouldn't get up. No, that, that's out, that's out, no, he shouldn't get up. That was too much of a big shot, I'm sure. No, and quite likely the referees counted him out. 
That's sad, that's sad, but that's the right thing. He shouldn't be allowed to continue. He was out on his feet. Well, fair play, you've got to say it for, to Johan Dry because Ikusan came at him absolutely furious, flying, throwing everything forward there. And Ikusan walked onto him and he's bowing at his feet and Ikusan's putting the respect back because, because this man has matched, well, he's more than matched him, this, this man's beaten him tonight, he's beaten him. Very, very deserved victory, a great victory for Johan Dry. I said at the beginning of the night, at the beginning of this fight, this was a chance for this man to make a bit of a reputation for himself, to make a, to, to, to get a scalp, and he did it. He did it in fine, in a fine way. Very, very impressive performance from Johan Dry. Just 25 years old from Marseille, south of France. Well, well, well. I want to see a replay. Let's just see the, if we can just see that final exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way into the ring, representing Team France, Kiriko Tambo. Very interesting fight, matched at 73 kilos. Let me tell you about Yusuf Bouganim. Very, very popular fighter, has been based in Thailand for many, many years. He has 168 fights, 143 wins, 23 losses and two draws. But he has fought the, the highest people, he's fought the best people. He is very, very highly respected in Thailand, believe me. If you uh, listen to recordings, if you listen to recordings of his fights in Thailand, and if you understand the Thai commentators, they respect him. He's just uh, been told to remove his T-shirt before he re-enters the ring. Might upset his uh, usual pre-fight roots ritual, but. Yusuf Bouganim is a picture of focus and control and success. As I say, he's had 168 fights. He's been based in Thailand for many, many years. He's fought the best of Western boxers. He's fought the best uh, Thai boxers. He's, he's a former champion of Belgium. He's a two-time world champion, Muay Thai champion. 
He's a champion of the Max Muay Thai tournament. He's a champion of t the Thai fight in 2015. I was talking to him earlier, he reminded me he was an Omnoy Stadium champion and a Rajdam Nern sta Stadium champion. So he has done the lot. So he's based in Thailand. I believe he's married to a Thai lady and, and has a, a, a child with, with her. Very focused. Very, very good fighter. So a former Thai fight champion in 2015. Been part of the organization for a long time. Actually featured in that first final in 2010. It was he lost to Fabio Pinker in the final. But uh, since then, he's just... Uh, developed and developed and progressed and improved to the point where he's at now where I say multiple multi-champion multi-time champion champion of Rajdam Nern Stadium Omnoy Stadium so he gets the respect in Thailand from the people who really know very methodical boxer gets his basics right you'll see he comes out his, his hands are high great defense all the time Controlled. Good hands, works off his hands. Interesting, look at the two boxes together, it would seem. Dambo does look bigger, doesn't he? Very respectful man, his use of Bougainham. Okay. A lot of respect between the corner, between his team there. Work together. Expect fireworks here. Yusuf Bouganim representing Thailand by way of Belgium, by way of Morocco against Gaten Dambo in the white from France. Let's have a look at what Gaten Dambo got. Forty-nine fights as Gaten Dambo. Spent a lot of time in Thailand. You'll see the Sakyan on his bank, on his back, which is a testament to some time in Thailand. Early exchanges. Dambo looks a little bit more sort of wild, doesn't he? Use of controlled. He keeps his hands up high. Nice defence. in the clinch there. Oh. He's in his own gym, Pattaya, <laughs> Yusuf. So I'm sure he spent day, he spends days and days and days working the clinch, working everything. Very hard working, very focused. Very, very difficult man to fight. Allowing Dambo to pull him over there, using his good balance, using his, his strength. Dambo very determined, a little bit more wild. Take down from uh, Yusuf. Good knees from Yusuf. Dangerous with those as, as uh, Dambo was walking in. As Yusuf picks, goes up a gear. Dambo likes the idea of leg kicks. Look at that. It's the corner saying again, again. Yusuf's just got a little bit more. A little bit extra. Yusuf is crowding him out. And Yusuf is saying, okay, well, I'll kick your legs as well. Knee from Yusuf. Dambo a little bit too quick to go in. He's got to be careful because Yusuf won't be phased. You can't leave yourself open against Yusuf. Good, good knee, good elbow from uh, from Dambo. 
And Yusuf uses the pulling with the knees there. And those are going to get through. He's, Dambo's got to be careful. Actually, the referee's giving him an eight, standing eight count. The referee's giving him a standing eight count. He thinks he's winded him, but I don't think he has. Dambo straight back into those low, low kicks. And again, the knees are going to try to take the wind out of Dambo. Oh, dear me, dear me, isn't it a shame about these elbow pads taking the flow out of the fight again? And there the bell goes to the end of round one. Plenty of action there. I think Yok T2, Yusef Berkhanem, and the captain of... Clayton Dumbo. So determined is Dumbo. They say he just like leaves himself open as he comes flying forward. And now we've got a scrap. Yes. Good work from Yusuf picking his opponent off as he comes forward. Good right hand digging over, but uh, Dumbo takes it. And Dumbo yes. fights furiously on. Both boys in great shape. You see, not, a, not an ounce of uh, fat on them. Good work from Dumbo, but Yusuf's got a bit more. Pulls him over. Yusuf's getting his rhythm now. You can see there, he's getting his rhythm, he's getting his distance. Good work from Dambo getting the knee in, but I think that Yusuf's just like sizing him up. He's trying to get that range. Oh, look at that sharp, sharp right hand spearing in there. Well, Dambo gets a few things through, but it's all a bit more sort of rugged. It's not clear. Clear shots, good work from Yusuf, three good knees, and there's another one that looks a bit low, though. Dambo comes out with a knee of his own, very determined, very fit. And the, what a fight this is. Good exchange from both boys. Oh, good elbows, good elbows from Yusuf, he put two good elbows, and there's the third one. Dambo takes them, though, he's still in there, they didn't get through. Taking the fight to Dambo. He's going backwards and forwards and then again slipping the elbow over the top. Again, they're not hurting Dambo though. Good work from Yusuf spinning Dambo. The referee will pull him apart. Last 30 seconds of this round. Oh my goodness. Every time, every time replacing these elbow pads gives them a second to catch the breath. Disrupts the fight. Good work from Dambo. My goodness. Puts an elbow in, but Yusuf's not going to be phased. He's going to fight back. He's a determined, brave fighter. Look at that. Three knees. So it swings back in, in uh, Yusuf's favour. What a great fight this is. This is what any fight fan likes to see. Switching left. Tick, tip for tat stuff. Exchanges. Great stuff. End of the round. Judges' scorecards, mark of respect from both boys. It's been a great fight. Yusuf knows he's been in for a, a, a hard test. Look at this tit for tat exchange. What a fight! Ooh, 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 ooh. There's a little bit of six, uh, six and one half as the other on that one. Good work from Yusuf with those kicks as, 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 as Dambo comes flying forward. <laughs> Yusuf pushes forward. He's still there, the Frenchman. 
So determined. So you can really get the feeling that these boys are on the home turf tonight. They want to pull out a performance. Oh, great knee, great knee from Yusuf. But he's still there, is Dambo. Good work from Yusuf in like blocking him off, you know, but Dambo is always there. Good work from Yusuf, good work from Yusuf. Pulling round the back there. So I don't know how the French would, would judge that, but in Thailand, that would put him a long way ahead. Dambo will not give up. He's going to go right to the... He's going to go right to the bell. He's so determined. And Yusuf feels he's just done enough now. He can just pick, pick Dambo off as, as Dambo flies forward. Working some good knees, Dambo. But just kicks like that, they're just not doing enough. Looking for the big shot to try and finish him off. Good right, but, but Yusuf catches it. Takes him off balance again. Say so Yusuf always seems to have a little bit more, doesn't he? Oh, look at the weight. Switched him there. Good work from Yusuf. Pulling ahead now, pulling ahead. He just needs to stay out of trouble. Maybe going and clinch him around the waist. Maybe dive in to take him around the waist. Oh, my goodness. Good work from Yusuf, finishing off. He knows he's got to work all the way through to the bell. Good work from Yusuf. Oh, nice. But he's just showing again, he's just got to be so careful. This Dambo is say he's going to go right, right to the final second. I hope the bell's loud because he's not going to give up. Oh, look at that. My goodness. Again, just a little bit too obvious, and Yusuf can show his experience and take him over. Yusuf's crowd and Yusuf's corner are, are saying, yeah, you've done enough, you've done enough. And he knows he's done enough. But the only person who oh, doesn't know is, is Dambo. He's not going to give up right. Look at this, what a performance. Well, I must say, the heart that I've seen from these French guys, and the bell has gone. I can't hear it clearly from my commentary position. Obviously, the bell's gone for the third and final round. But what a great fight, what a great performance from this boy, Gaten Thomas Dambo, local boy. And he has pushed Yusuf and, and got a great performance out of Yusuf Beginham. But we'll go to the judges' scorecards. Both boys playing to the crowd a bit now as we wait for the judges' decision. Still coordinating this with our Thai, live Thai, v, Thai audience. So there might be a short delay. Both boys popular with the crowd here. It's been a great fight. Yusuf Boonin gets the decision, rightly so in my mind. Great performance from Dambo, really pushed him, but a little bit... Uh, Yusuf had that bit, bit extra quality. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our penultimate contest. Making his way to the ring, representing Team France, Abdel Noir Ali Kada.
representing France. He's had 26 fights, 21 wins, four losses, and one draw. Now, I'm told that this, this boy may well, bright things are expected of this boy in the future. People think he may have to be a little bit special. Asia title, here he is. Perhaps the most famous Muay Thai, perhaps the most famous Muay Thai fighter in the world. Still playing his trade, he's 36 years old now, but he's in superb shape and he loves fighting. Always puts on a show. He is in, as I say, he's in fantastic shape. So he can just do anything and he's got a full, full repertoire of, of techniques. Some of his techniques highly unorthodox, but the, his timing is such as that, it, is that he is able to work them in and often win fights with them. And he's done that to spectacular effect, sometimes on the Thai fight roster, uh, fighting for Thai fight, and many, many times over the years. So he's 36 years old from Mahasarakam in Isan in the northeast of Thailand. He's had 338 tie fights. He's won 290 of them. He gets 49 losses and two just two draws. In tie terms, I say he's done everything. He's he's gone in with every big name over the last probably 18, 20 years. He's gone with, gone in with every every big name. You name the best fighters from any year in the last 20 years. He's he's fought them all. He is a legend, and what a privilege it is for the audience here, the live audience at, in France here at the Pierre, uh, st the Stade Pierre de Corbatin in Paris. Very, very special man. Always creates an aura about him. Loves it. Always got a smile on his face, and that's what comes with having 338 fights. His opponent, Abdul Abdul Noor Ali Kadar, already a WBC European champion. So I say he's very much considered a, a one for the future, a prospect, and so they've given him this match tonight. He's going to have a heck of a test, but it's a fighter's chance. If he can do something special, if he can put Senchai's name on his on on, he, even if he can do well, even if he can do well against Senchai. It will be remembered. He can make this is a chance for him to make, his, make himself a name. Senchai has fought over the last sort of two or three years. He's, he's uh, joined Thai Fight and he's joined other international promotions. He generally fights against Westerners nowadays <clears throat> and has remained unbeaten apart from one occasion, I believe, if I recall correctly. He did, I think, I'm pretty sure he did lose to Fabio Pinker. The uh, Frenchman who I've referred to a few times, ex the, who won the Thai Fight uh, Championship the, in 2010. Look at, the, listen to the applause going up for Sen Chai as he goes through a beautiful Y crew ritual ramway, paying respects. He is the epitome of Muay Thai. It is so right that he is here fighting as part of the Thai Fight team. And I say, what a privilege for everybody who's in this audience. He's got something really special about him, this man. Say, so still superbly fit. Watch his feet, he's so sharp, so light on his feet. Anything can happen, he can change his direction. So incredibly fast. 
with a smile. Listen to the listen to the cheers. Beautiful Y crew. This is what Muay Thai, this is the best of Muay Thai. How great it is to see him live here in Paris. 36 years old now. But as I say, he's in superb condition. He's so sharp. And the way he does it, he does a lot of like um, kick sparring, just very light, but he just keeps that. They so sh they work on the sharpness, just getting the technique in. That's what he works on now. He's got so that gives him that sense of timing, that ability to just preempt and get the kick in. Or get a, a block and reply, and the, the place erupts in applause for that Ramway Y crew. You see a clear height advantage to the younger Frenchman. Yeah, 12 centimeters taller. There's a chance for him to make a name for himself tonight. We'll see. We'll see. Obviously, the say the French team are very organised. They really have really come here to win. So we'll see. So, Abdul Nur Ali Kadar representing Bakusha. France in white. Seng Chai, PK Seng Chai Muay Thai Jim representing Thailand in black. Last respects. Last blessing for Seng Chai. Over the ropes as he's done 300 and odd times before. Gets the crowd behind him saying, I love you, I love you. And they love him. What an ambassador for the sport he is. Round one, here we go. Seng Chai fighting out of his usual southpaw stance. Oh, Frenchman saying, I'm not going to be phased by your little tricks, by your fast feet. Such a box of tricks, Senchai. Some people just can't work out how to fathom him, and in so doing, they end up not, not attacking at all. They just close up. <laughs> oh, he can do it though. He can do it. He can make these things work, Senchai. He still do it at 36 years old. Frenchman not phased. He's taking the fight to him. Oh, straight away there, though, that the kick gets through. This is what he does, he disguises he disguises his attack so well, does Senchai. Breaks down the distance so well, this is what I was saying before, he's so light on his feet, floats across the carpet. Oh, dear. Does that kind of thing so well again? He's so sharp. So able. Take it into the clinch. He can do everything from Senchai. So he can do all this because he's so light in his feet. He's so sharp. Frenchman retreating, staying out of trouble. Moving around a lot more than most of the French uh, fighters we've seen tonight. But it's interesting, he's not phased at all. Oh, and there we see the famous cartwheel kick. Senchai's signature kick, he lands it. But the Frenchman is nonchalant, didn't worry him at all, and he comes back and gets some, a nice kick onto the arms of Senchai. Senchai knows he's got to work so hard, he's got to concentrate. A bit too obvious there, the Frenchman. He needs to break down the distance, doesn't he? He's not getting those kicks, not landing his kicks. Senchai making him miss every time with those kicks. He's saying, come on to the crowd, get behind me, give me some encouragement. 
What he needs to do is just break down another six inches before he launches those kicks, though. Bell goes to the end of round one, I didn't hear it. Nice action, though. Business like. And stays out of trouble. His reactions are still lightning. Oh my goodness, he got his flying kick in. Well, the Frenchman is not phased. He's certainly giving him a go, but Senchai's always got a little bit more. Pulling him round. Works his range out. Oh, turns him in lovely. <laughs> Gives him a kiss on the back of the head. Say, what a showman. Ooh, good shot from Kadar. Taking him off, off balance. So he just, Sanchez just mixes it up so much, you just don't know what's coming next. But Ali Kadar is still there, he's still there and fighting, and showing up. He's... Oh, look at the timing and distance there from Sanchez. Exemplary stuff. That's what you get from this kick sparring that he does still pretty much every day when he's training. He's got that distance, space, timing, sussed to the absolute finest split second. Oh, look at that. Puts an elbow in, he's doing everything, then takes him down. How convincing. a little bit of a lesson there he said right okay now I'm going to show you I'm going to put you in your place a little bit here so but Ali Kadar is no real respecter of reputations he's here to make a fight which is what we want to see oh and look at what Senchai does turning him round again again Senchai makes him miss What a great round, what a show, what a show from Senchai. So you know, Senchai, he's just got so much though. How can he do that? He can do that because he's got that ability to shift his weight. Oh, my goodness. That was a good stiff elbow from Senchai that got through. He's not allowing the Frenchman to any opportunity to work forward. He knows that the Frenchman's looking for a knockout. So Senchai's put a poor performance in himself in this third round. to young uh, Ali Kadar. He's still working, he's still in there. Look at the defence, look at the defence of Senchai, look at that, the way the defence, then the slip, then the return in. Let's say, if that was in Thailand, he'd get all the points for that. the way he does that, my goodness, what a lesson it is. If you can, you just watch that, play it back, watch it back, the way he's shifted his weight and pulled his opponent over. 
textbook stuff from Senchai. Good reply from the youngster. He's still in the fight, he's still here, he's still determined, he's still putting the combination together. But again, Senchai can just work that. That was extra, those fine percentage points, turn him over and, and pull him over. Senchai really knows that uh, the Frenchman's going to be looking for a big shot. Oh, there we go, the spin kick again. The referee pulling him apart, not allowing Ali Kadar to take what would have been an, an illegal advantage. Look at the way he evades that, though. Look at, think of his sight in Thailand, in Thailand, in Thai, they talk about having good eyes. My goodness, his eyes are X-ray, aren't they? And still, at the age of 36. Look at that, the way he turns him again. But the youngster is going to fight all the way to the bell, as all these French fighters have today. Look at that again, the evasion from Senchai, throwing him away. I'll say that, oh! What a performance, what a treat. The legend, Senchai. Rightfully, the crowd on the feet as the standing, look at that, a standing ovation. And he's enjoyed it. And fair play to this young man, Abdul Noor, Abdul Noor Ali Kadar, 19 years of age, who has brought a great performance out to Senchai. I've seen, I'm sure a lot of you have seen, some fighters just can't live with them at all. But uh, he's pushed him, he's made Senchai work for three rounds, he's made him produce some brilliance to, uh, to, avoid, to avoid his attacks. What a performance from Senchai. Fair play to Abdul Noor, watch this name, Abdul Noor Ali Kadar, just 19 years old. So here's Senchai, with the Thai flag around his shoulders, as is often the case. What a representative of Thailand. Does things the right way, the rituals, very, very Thai, total respect. What an ambassador, I said before, an ambassador to the sport, an ambassador to the country, doing things properly, doing things the right way, being an absolute master of what you do, but he is so humble. Saw him earlier in the changing rooms, just playing on his phone. No airs and graces. And doesn't walk around saying I'm the best, I'm the greatest. Three rounds. We and uh, that could be borne out by anybody and everybody who's had contact with him. Can you Santai from Thailand? Just confirming it, getting the. <laughs> and he has got the decision. Senchai, victorious. Well, it's just sheer feel-good factor in, in this uh, auditorium now because, as I say, that's a great performance. The youngster did great.